There's a YouTube channel slash podcast network whose hashtag content I used to be a big fan of. I watched all their videos and listened to most of their numerous audio programs looking at movies or television episodes or what have you. But something started to turn for me during the follow-up to their podcast breakdown of Jordan Peele's Get Out, which began with the host slash founder complaining that people were unhappy they had done a podcast about the deeper meaning of Get Out featuring exclusively white folks. And I was struck by that too, but it was really the whining, and particularly the our one black guy wasn't available and also you can't tell us what to do defense that gave me pause. Now, one might think I am throwing stones in a glass house since I reviewed Get Out for Flixus.com and Peel's second feature, Us, right here on this channel, but at least I had the decency to feel weird about it. <laughs> Hello, by the way, and welcome to the week I didn't review. You can call me about to get canceled. And today, I am discussing two plays that I never covered, but still want to talk about. Slave Play, which just hit Broadway and is running at the Golden Theater through January, and What the Constitution Means to Me, which recently closed a highly celebrated run. Both of these shows came from off-Broadway engagements at the New York Theater Workshop in the East Village, which is probably my favorite theatrical venue in the city. Ever since I saw their production of Othello back in late 2016 featuring Daniel Craig singing an acoustic version of Drake's Hotline Bling, I was all in, and I have made an effort to see as many of the shows they've put on as possible. As a result, I saw Slave Play opening night last November, and I did so without the faintest idea what I was getting myself into. Because when I know I'm going to a thing, be it movie, play, or whatever, I actively avoid any information about it. Based on the name, I assumed it would be difficult. When I saw in their reconfirmation email on the day of that it featured nudity, sexual content, simulated sexual violence, and racially violent language, I was prepared for something devastating. But I was not prepared for slave play. When it opened with a woman coming out dressed in antebellum clothing who proceeded to sweep the floors and then twerk to Rihanna, I was so confused. When the true nature of the play revealed itself, I was honestly just happy that I wasn't going to be watching the horrors of an actual plantation theatrically rendered for a hundred minutes. The unequal parts hilarious and emotional look at the dynamics of multiracial and white-black in particular couples in America today is genuinely amazing. In fact, it was the best show I saw last year, and I'm extremely excited that it's getting new life on Broadway. On the other hand, I had literally hundreds of opportunities to see what the Constitution means to me before I actually did, which was right under the wire, just five days before it closed. I have so many automated emails telling me to see it and to see it cheaper than I ultimately did, and I ignored every single one of them. It required a friend telling me that for her birthday, she wanted me to go see the play to make it happen. And I loved it, although its structure undermines its power in order to make people feel better about the world, which was slightly frustrating. I'll get to that. The reason I had avoided the show, honestly, was that I had assumed it was about politics and I would rather watch the reenactment of a plantation experience than a critically acclaimed dramatic monologue about modern politics, which says a lot of things that I don't feel like unpacking. The week I finally went happened to be the one leading up to my channel's anniversary, and obviously I wasn't going to scrap all of the work I had done to talk about a show that had just closed. But I knew that I would figure out a way to shoehorn it into some future video. 
this one. The decision to not review slave play was more complicated. It happened to be Thanksgiving week, so logistics were an issue, and I was also conflicted about doing a video on an off-Broadway play. I was concerned that it was too niche, even for me, though my review of Dragon Spring Phoenix Rise means I've pretty well resolved that one. By the time that I saw that the show was being reviewed in other places that don't typically review plays, it seemed too late. And also, look at me. I'm good to talk about toxic masculinity forever to idiots who actively misunderstand what it means, at least conceptually. In practice, I'm so over that shit. Because it has impacted me and my life. But do you know what hasn't? and never could have? Growing up in a country that was founded on the belief that I am inherently less than. And I'm not just talking about race. What the Constitution means to me is a scathing indictment of this country's founding principles. Not the ones that subjugated black people to enslavement, but the ones that refused to give women of any race the fundamental protections and privileges given to white men. It's an angry show, and it made me angry too. How could it not? How could you hear her story and feel anything but fury at the society that made it necessary? And I'm a fucking white guy. I'm the enemy here. But it was also never the target of writer-performer Heidi Schreck's ire. My base level of concern for the well-being of people who don't look like me put me in some category that is hardly beyond reproach, but was beyond the scope of her story. Slave play, on the other hand, gets right at those people, the ones who consider themselves allies and do care but still don't really get it. The people who would go see a show like this. People kind of like me. You know, I have dated some not-white women, but those never progressed into serious enough relationships that I ever had to genuinely grapple with what that might mean culturally for us. As I wrote that line on my commute, the subway stopped and the door opened up to a poster for the new comedy Mixed-ish, which seemed oddly appropriate. The characters of Slave Play, though, are in long-term multiracial romantic relationships. The white partners, one would think, are the truest of allies. And yet, they know the stares and get frustrated at the overt racism, of course, but the more insidious stuff that has been with their partners and they have inadvertently helped perpetuate remains invisible to them. And it is thrown in their faces. And in ours. The back of the set, which then and hopefully now was a giant mirror that we could see ourselves in, made it impossible to not think about our own reactions to what we were witnessing. It's amazing how well I remember slave play, considering I saw it nearly a year ago. You know, I go to a lot of things, which this channel is a testament to, and even stuff I liked well enough, I tend to forget before too long, not just the specifics, the very fact that I saw them but not slave play. After the show, I walked quietly across Manhattan to get to the train. Behind me, someone who had apparently seen an early draft of the script at a reading was talking about the differences between them, most critically a totally different ending that sounded far less impactful. It is interesting to see how a show evolves, and I'm sure there are some differences between what I saw a year ago and what I hope anyone who has the chance today will experience, but it's unlikely to be as radical as the differences between the two versions that the man standing behind me had seen. I don't know how much the ending of what the Constitution means to me changed from night to night. It presents as something that is always unique, but I talked to a friend who saw it twice and he said that both times it went down largely the same way, which was also how it did when I saw it. I can see why some people like that it ends on a lighter note, a fierce yet friendly debate between an 18-year-old and Shrek herself. There are two who switch off, uh, Rostelid Cyprian and Thursday Williams. We saw the latter. 
The two debaters are given a prompt. It might change, but in all three cases, it was, should the Constitution be abolished? They're given a minute to prepare, and then they go. Both are good debaters, and it is interesting to hear them make their cases. But it is also such a radical change of pace and tone that it kind of makes you forget about all of the powerful storytelling that had preceded it. You're engaged in a new thing, and that becomes your sole focus. And of course, you bring everything you have heard into how you hear the arguments, and it helps make the case for yes far stronger than the one for no, but it's been relegated to context. Slave play leaves you with the pain and with reflection, both literally and figuratively. That mirror is a constant reminder that we are a part of this. It is not merely a theatrical production telling some fictional story that we can write off or even compartmentalize. There's a knee-jerk defensiveness that folks like me get when faced with the truths that both of these shows present. Not that misogyny and racism don't exist, but that we're not the problem, that the folks who refuse to acknowledge those things are. And yeah, they're awful, but there is no prize for being hashtag woke. That is a fucking baseline. And we shouldn't need shows like Slave Play and What the Constitution Means to Me to remind us of that. But we should be happy that we have them anyway. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you particularly to my patrons, my mom, Hamry and Marco, Kat Saracata, and Benjamin Schiff. This is a, you know, different kind of video a little bit, but hopefully you liked it. If you did, great. If not, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe. I hope to see you on Monday.